Hello everyone and welcome to the Avoni YouTube channel. Today we are diving into the Avoni data table and in this video I will share seven tips and tricks to help you get the most of the Avoni data table. So whether you're a beginner or an experienced user, this insight will enhance your experience with the Avoni data table. So let's jump right in and discover how to maximize the potential of the Avoni data table. So moving to our first tip, I want to add on this data table, I want to add button actions. For example, I want to add a button completely and at the end of the data table to launch an interaction. So to launch another flow or to launch another interaction. Let me show you how you can add a button directly on the data table. So let's go directly on the flow. So this is my screen flow with the data table inside. Let's open the component builder. So from there, I have my data table. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to add a new column to add an action button. So I will go straight completely down, data mapping, add column, and I will select button icon. You need to name this button icon. That's extremely important because that's what you would use uh, on the inter interaction panel to launch an interaction directly by uh, on this button. So. Let's select the um, variant of this button. Let's say uh, border. Let's select an icon. Change owner. Uh, OK. Save. So now the button is added right there. You can still fine tune how the, the button is uh, added. So we'll click on the column once again, advanced option. And what I will do, I will set a um, fix width of 40 pixels. So now it's way better. Uh, completely on the bottom, uh, on the, um, the end side of the data table. Now I'm able to go on interaction. And on row action, I'm able to create the interaction. So for example, add row action, target name. I have the target name, the change owner name of the button icon. And from there, I'm able to trigger any interaction available. For, for example, I will open a flow dialog. Let's say uh, change owner. Let's put, uh, put the, let's pass an input variable. Hmm, account ID, the value is account ID closed. So I'm passing this input variable to this, the other flow. So I know which account I need to update. And that's pretty much done. So now let's click down and let's do a live test to see if I'm able to click on the button. Let's refresh the, the data table. OK, now the button is there. Perfect. It works perfectly fine. I'm able to click on this button to launch another flow. It's passing the input variable to exactly know uh, on which record I am right now. So that's for the first tip, how you can add button icons directly on the data table. Let's get back to the, 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 the flow builder with the second, the second tip. Let's open the component builder. Now, what I'd like to do, I'd like to display images. I'd like to display logo for the account. So once again, I scroll down, add column, and the source field, what I did, I created a formula, uh, not a formula, a custom field, URL field, to add the logo URL for each record. So I select the source field logo, then the type, you will select avatar. And then from there, you can define the avatar attribute. What you need to do is for the fallback, a fallback icon name, you need to map that to the field name logo. So on my use case, as I said, I created a custom field, a custom URL field to store the URL logo. And from there, I can set the variant square size medium uh, and save. So now I have the logo, I can move the column completely here, I can click custom label, I don't want to display a label at the top. And let's advanced option, let's set a fixed width for the column. Perfect, so now I'm able to display images directly on the data table. That's for the second tip. 
The third tip now, how you can really enhance data presentation on the data table. For example, here I have onboarding progress. That's a person field. You can click on that field to change how it's displayed. For example, it's person field. That's the standard field from Salesforce. But I can change to progress bar to automatically display the person field using a progress bar. So here you can say thickness small. You can change the theme if you want. The variant as well, show value, save. And now you can see the progress bar instead of just numbers with a percent. So that's for the other tip I'd like to show you how you can enhance data presentation using progress bar. And as you can see right there, you have various type of data presentation, progress bar, progress circle, progress wing, waiting, slider. There is a lot of things you can explore to enhance the data presentation on the data table. Next tip, how you can add a lookup field and make that lookup field editable. So I will just drag the bike field right there. It's a lookup field. Select the column, lookup, linkify that, and you can make the lookup field editable. Save, so users will be able to change the lookup field directly from there. That's for the other tip. Next one, so that's really an interesting one. Here on the header of the data table, I have this launch process action button. But I want to make or I want to disable this button if no record are selecting, meaning that I will only be able to interact or make this button clickable if at least one item is selecting on the data table. And to achieve that, what I need to do first, I need to create a new resource, and that's a formula resource. Type it's Boolean, and I will paste the formula, which is like this. It's a new formula. That's the name of the data table API name I'm using on the flow. And then I'm using the number selected row attribute. So I'm saying if the number selected row attribute of the data table is more than zero, it's true, otherwise it's false. So let's say um, disable uh, a direction. OK, that's my formula. Now I can open the data table once again, component builder, and then I will expand the header section. And on the header section, you have disable action attribute. But instead of disabling that manually, I'd like to dynamically disable the action based on the formula I just created, disable other action. Done. So now let's save the flow and activate the flow again to see our changes. OK, perfect. As you can see, first, we have new update on the data table. The lookup field is editable. And you can also select different bike. So that's working fine. You can save information. OK, we can see the images in action right there. So now we'd like to test also the button action. Right now, it's disabled by default because I don't have any rows selected. Let's select a row. Oh, now, yes, my formula, Boolean formula is working fine. I can launch the process, which is launching another flow. So that's extremely useful or powerful because you can dynamically disable action based on the criteria you have on the formula. So that's really a quick example. Now, the last two tips on this video regarding the Avoni data table, it's more about you know, the, um, enhancing the look and enhancing the look and feel of the data table. First, as you can see, I have like borders around the data table. It's like white border. It's not well integrated. And also, I want to activate what, I, what we call the infinite scrolling. 
Right now it's fine, but it's scrolling completely on the page. It's not very efficient regarding the user experience. So let's get back to the screen element again. Open the component builder. And the first one is to remove the margin we have here around the data table, the unnecessary margin. So here you will see pull to boundary, top, pull to boundary, left and right. So now the data table is really flush with the border. And you can do the same with the bottom. Now, if you'd like to activate the infinite scrolling, it's only one click away. Activate this button and you're done. Let's save that and let's see the difference now regarding the look and feel. So now we have a way more integrated data table on the page. And infinite scrolling, you see the difference? It's not scrolling completely on the bottom of the page. I'm still staying on the data table, which is extremely great. And I love that regarding the user experience. Now I can see the logos. I have access to button action where I can launch another flow. I have a raw, uh, header action that is disabled by default using a dynamic formula. So if I'm selecting an, an item, I'm able to launch that flow. Uh, you're also able to display uh, data type using progress bar and various other data types available on the data table and also being able to edit lookup fields as well. So that's really for the few seven tips and tricks I'd like to share with you today regarding the Avoni data table. There is a lot of more to explore. So if you have any ideas or if you'd like to learn more about a new video you'd like to watch, let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much and have a great day.